Hi, this is your host Swapnil Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFI Insights and today we have with us once again Harry Ardla, EME Technical Director at Sios Technology. Harry, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, it's great to be here again, Swap. Well, thank you. Yeah, and today we are going to talk about best practices for high availability in SAP. If I'm not wrong, uh, you folks have a customer in the polymer manufacturing industry that had some unique challenges related to providing high availability production for the SAP uh, landscape. First of all, tell us a bit about this customer and what are the challenges that they were facing there? Yeah, of course. So, so this was a, a customer in the, the, the manufacturing sector, uh, the polymer manufacturing sector, as you mentioned, and they operate at a global level. So what they were doing is they were running a, a wide um, network of production sites around the world. And each one of these production sites um, had its own associated IT landscape with it as well. And, and what the customer was previously doing is they, they, had, um, they were running these IT operations within a, a group of data centers that, that were dotted, dotted around the globe. Um, but they got to a point where you know, the infrastructure at the time was based on a mix of physical servers and virtual servers. And as their business met new growth, they, they found that this infrastructure was getting a little bit expensive to, to, to run and a bit difficult to manage. So like a lot of customers, they, they made the bold decision to, to shut down all of their data centers and move their entire IT operation in, into the cloud. Now, the challenge they, they sort of came across when migrating into the cloud was, um, was in relation to their SAP landscape. Um, although moving to the cloud can present a wide range of economic and technical benefits, there's some areas where the public cloud platforms are still a little bit lacking, specifically with regard to meeting demanding high availability SLAs for mission critical applications like SAP. So the customer realized that the cloud provider that they were working with was not gonna be able to deliver the availability SLA that they were looking for. And to try and find those SLAs that they used to get when they were running on premise, they were going to have to consider a, a third party approach to, to try and meet some of those high availability needs. But um, in addition to that, there was also a, a couple of other factors that, that they needed to consider if they were going to go up this, this third party road. The, the SAP landscape that they were running was one very much of a heterogeneous nature, where they were running a little bit of SUSE Linux in one side of the infrastructure. There was a little bit of Oracle Linux elsewhere and it was a similar picture from a database standpoint as well there was a bit of sap hana um, a bit of sybase and also a bit of oracle database as well so if you imagine trying to manage separate high availability solutions for all of these different os's and databases that's sort of somewhat going to be a little bit problematic on a, on a sort of a day-to-day -day administration level and then one of the other things they were looking at was that yeah, seeing that SAP was such a core part of their, of their operations within the organization, it was absolutely vital for them that uh, they, they, they adopt a high availability technology that was also going to be certified by SAP themselves. So, so with those sort of, um, uh, the, you know, there were several key criteria that, that they really needed to meet if they were going to consider this, uh, this HA strategy with a third party. You talked about the challenges that this customer was facing. Now, can you also talk about how you helped them overcome these challenges? What we ended up doing is just to, to deliver that high availability and failover protection for those SAP components and, and the entire SAP landscape. Uh, we, we ended up deploying a range of um, Linux-based clusters using our SIOS LifeKeeper and SIOS DataKeeper solutions. Um, so this was all deployed into the cloud platform of their choice. And the clusters were deployed in a way where they were spread out across multiple availability zones. And the idea behind that was just to help them avoid any single point of failure in that architecture. Um, so what it ended up giving them was a, um, a level of continuous availability on all of the major SAP components and all of those associated operating systems um, databases and also the underlying networking. And it also gave them that single high availability solution 
that provided them with the complete HA coverage for the entire SAP landscape. So to some extent, you could say they, they standardized all of their SAP high availability on, on SIOS. So to sort of capture that in a nutshell, what the SIOS approach provided them with was a, a comprehensive high availability solution that you know, firstly, it supported all the mission, the this mission criticality of the SAP landscape in its entirety. It's delivering a 99.99% a availability SLA, which is what they were looking for, whilst at the same time delivering that capability to protect a mixed environment of different operating systems and different databases. And then also giving them the assurance that the high availability of choice was also certified by, by SAP themselves. If I'm not wrong, this is just one of the examples of one of the many kind of uh customers that you helped last time we talked about business maintenance systems as well. So um, the fact is that, you know, manufacturing industry is not the only customers that you folks help with. So can you also share with us some examples of uh, customers in a different industry who are facing either similar or different high availability challenges? Yeah, certainly. So um, uh, another interesting example I can share with you today actually comes from the healthcare sector. So if you think about it, downtime for applications and storage in this industry, and, and without meaning to exaggerate, can literally be a matter of life and death. So it's imperative to ensure that you have reliable access to critical systems. And we talk about systems like you know, electronic health records and medical imaging technology, picture archiving, and any associated communication systems as well. If these kinds of systems, they, they need to be running all of the time. Um, and the healthcare industry, you know, from a technology perspective, uh, is also quite vulnerable in that it's also been increasingly targeted in things like ransomware attacks, which, as we all know, can also lead to, to significant downtime as well on an infrastructure. So, um, so down in Australia, we work very closely with the, the Chris O'Brien Lifehouse Hospital, who, who specialise in, in state-of-the-art research and treatment of, of rare and complex um, cancer cases. So, so they'll provide a, a wide range of treatments, services, and additional to support to, to a person with, to, with cancer might need. So what Lifehouse were doing, they, they were using um, an application called Meditech, which was being used for things like patient administration and, and central storage of, of patients' electronic health records. So. This system was actually quite vital for them because if, if you think about it, if this kind of system goes down, um, you can't access the patient's records and that could potentially paralyze the hospital's, um, hospital's operations. So, so within their data center, they were running this Meditech application on a Windows Server failover cluster. And this was based on a, on a traditional SAN storage configuration. Uh, and like a lot of organizations, Lifehouse plan to, to migrate this application to the cloud because, yeah, like a lot of organizations, they wanted to take advantage of cloud agility and affordability. So Lifehouse um, chose one of the common public cloud providers and their expectation was to be able to, to take the existing on-premise environment and just do a simple lift and shift in, into, into the cloud environment. Um, and to be able to simulate the on-premises SAN storage configuration, they chose a, a cloud volume service that was being offered by the cloud vendor itself through their marketplace. And they took these cloud volumes and they attached them to their Windows Server failover cluster. But what they found really quickly was that there was a, a substantial adverse impact to the performance throughput requirements um, using this, this cloud volume storage service. And they realized very quickly that this service was not going to be suitable for their Meditech application. So this meant they had to go back to the drawing board and after conducting an exhaustive search, they concluded that the best solution that could meet both their availability and performance requirements was the SIOS data keeper cluster edition solution. And now can you go a bit deeper into how did you actually help them with their Meditech system? Yeah, so what, what data keeper um, cluster edition provided was a was that high performance synchronous data replication 
that that life house were looking for, what they needed. Um, so by using real time block level replication or block level mirroring between the local storage attached to the active and the standby instances of the cluster, the solution overcame the performance issues that they were previously experiencing. And the resulting sandless cluster, shall we call it, um, is compatible with Windows Server failover clustering. It supplies that continuous monitoring for detecting failures, both at the application level and at the database level. And it also offers conf um, configurable policies for, for failing over and failing back. But um, where they were sort of pleasantly surprised with the solution was by how easy it was to, to implement and operate. So, so the Data Keeper interface is very much like using the failover cluster manager interface. So if you're familiar with administrating failover clusters, you're in very familiar territory when, when you're working with the Data Keeper cluster edition interface. Excellent. Uh, uh, when we look at all these use cases and these examples, and the, the best thing is that there's always something to learn from them, you know, as you try to solve a problem, there is a lesson to be learned which helps with the next customer, all the same customers as well. So can you talk about uh, uh, what lessons we can learn from these examples, uh, which are two different industries, and what are the key takeaways here? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great question. And, you know, thinking about some of the examples we've just discussed there, I think firstly what I would say is um, pay very close attention to some of the high availability SLAs that are being offered by the cloud vendors. You know, keep in mind that their SLAs are only related to the underlying, underlying cloud architecture, such as, you know, the VM instances, their storage, the underlying physical architecture. And sort of depending upon the type of service that you're consuming from the cloud vendor, the SLA of the applications and databases running within the instances, it's actually your responsibility as the customer, not, not the cloud vendor. So if you've got um, a highly critical app or database that you need to protect in the cloud, you may also need to consider an application level availability solution that will supplement the SLAs that the cloud vendor is delivering at an infrastructure level. Um, the other thing I think I would say is um, try to adopt a high availability strategy that can adapt and grow as and when your IT environment evolves as well. So in other words, avoid falling into the trap of using high availability solutions that are designed for specific operating systems, applications, or database. You know, otherwise, you might find yourself managing different availability solutions in a mixed IT landscape. So in other words, try to remain as agnostic as possible for your availability needs, and that, that will be uh, very beneficial for you. Um, and then the last point I think I would consider is um, you'd also want to ensure that your, your choice of availability technology and the way it's architected and the way it's deployed um, doesn't ultimately add um, an adverse impact to the performance of the application or the database that you're trying to protect. If you recall, that's what the team at Lifehouse experienced. Yeah, it's all very well having a, a highly redundant application and database architecture, but you don't want to deliver that at the cost of a painfully slow service. So it's, so it's key to find that balance between high availability and application performance, which in most cases can could only truly be established through through testing or, or proof of concept exercises. Harry, once again, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and share these insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Swap.